Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to baseball at beautiful Wrigley Field. This is the voice of Wrigley Field, Jeremiah Paprocki, and at this time I ask for your attention please. Tonight, I'm going to free your mind and help you fall asleep. Instead of counting sheep, I will announce historic facts from all 61 of our Hall of Famers. This guided meditation is brought to you by our friends at Mind Drinks. Mind is a 100% plant-based CBD drink that not only tastes good, but makes you feel good too. Next to my microphone, I have the orange mango flavor. Mine contains CBD, but not THC, so you can feel relaxed without getting high. It's a wellness drink that helps me perform at my best. Now I invite you to close your eyes and embrace your inner peace as I soothe you to sleep with Cubs Hall of Fame history. Let's begin. Leading off, Frank Chance, Cubs first baseman and manager from 1898 to 1912. Frank served as a player and manager from 1905 to 1912, leading the Cubs to two World Series titles and four NL pennants, including a major league record 116 wins in 1906. He batted .297 and stole 402 bases in 15 seasons with Chicago. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1946. Mordecai Brown, also known as Three Finger, played for the Cubs as a pitcher from 1904 to 1916. He posted 188 wins and a franchise best 1.80 ERA in 10 seasons, including at least 20 wins in each season from 1906 to 1911 a stretch that featured two World Series championships and four NL pennants. His 188 wins are second most in franchise history, and he was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1949. Kai Kai Kyler, Cubs outfielder from 1928 to 1935. He hit .325 in eight seasons with the Cubs, topping the NL in stolen bases in three straight seasons from 1928 to 1930. He set a career-high marks in 1930 with 155 runs scored and 134 RBIs. He led the league with 42 doubles as an NL All-Star in 1934 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1968. Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub, the shortstop and first baseman played with the Cubs from 1953 to 1971. He's the franchise leader in games, playing 2,528 and ranked second in home runs, hitting 512, as well as 2,583 hits and 1,636 RBI. Played all 19 seasons with Chicago, earning 14 NL All-Star bids and two NL MVP awards in 1958 and 1959. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1977 and his number was retired by the Cubs in 1982. Phil Cavaretta, the Cubs' first baseman, outfielder, and manager from 1934 to 1953. Phil made his major league debut at age 18 and played 20 seasons with the Cubs. He batted .292 in 1,953 games, including a .355 mark in 1945 to win the NL batting title and MVP. He earned three NL All-Star bids and was a player and manager from 1951 to 1953. John Clarkson, a Cubs pitcher from 1884 to 1887. Clarkson went 137 wins and 57 losses, 
with a 2.39 ERA in four seasons with the Cubs, including a league-best 53 wins for the NL champions in 1885. He struck out over 300 batters in 1885 and 1886 and finished his career with 328 wins. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1963. Johnny Evers Come second baseman and manager from 1902 to 1921. The middleman of the famous double plate combo that led the Cubs to two World Series championships and four NL pennants. Evers hit .276 with 291 stolen bases in 12 seasons with Chicago, regularly drawing more walks than strikeouts. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1946. Clark Griffith, Kemp's pitcher from 1893 to 1900. Griffith spent nearly 70 years in baseball as a player, manager, and executive. He went 152 and 96 in eight seasons with Chicago, becoming the first Cubs pitcher to win at least 20 games in six consecutive seasons. He led the league with a 1.88 ERA in 1898 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1946. Stan Hack, the Cubs third baseman and manager from 1932 to 1956. One of the Cubs' greatest leadoff hitters, Hack batted .301 with 2,193 hits during 16 seasons, all with Chicago. A four-time NL All-Star who led the league twice in stolen bases and twice in hits while scoring at least 100 runs seven times. Billy Herman the Kemp's second baseman from 1931 to 1941. He was a master of the hit and run and batted .309 with 346 doubles in 11 seasons, collecting at least 200 hits three times. A seven-time All-Star with Chicago, he batted .341 in 1935, leading to NL in hits with 227 as well as 57 doubles. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1975. King Kelly, the Cubs outfielder and catcher from 1880 to 1886. Kelly played seven seasons in Chicago, hitting .316 with 728 runs scored in 681 games. Kelly led the league and run scored three consecutive seasons and won two batting titles, including a .388 average and 155 runs scored in 1886. King Kelly was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1945. Charlie Graham was the Cubs' first baseman, manager, broadcaster, and executive from 1925 to 1960. Grimm served the Cubs as a player, manager, coach, broadcaster, and executive, including as a player and manager from 1932 to 1936. He led the Cubs to NL pennants in 1932, 1935, and 1945. He hit .296 with 270 doubles and 61 home runs in 12 seasons as a Cub leading NL first baseman in fielding percentage four times. Gabby Hartnett, Cubs catcher and manager from 1922 to 1940. Hartnett hit .297 with 1,153 RBIs in 19 seasons as a Cub, retiring as the franchise home run leader with 231. He earned six All-Star nods and a league MVP in 1935. Hartnett led Chicago to the 1938 NL pennant as a player and manager and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1955. Rogers Hornsby, Kemp's second baseman and manager from 1929 to 1932. 
Hornsby batted .350 with a .435 OBP in 317 games with the Cubs. He won the NL MVP in 1929, batting .380 with 156 runs, 39 home runs, and 149 RBI. He was a player and manager from 1930 to 1932, and later served as a broadcaster and coach with the Cubs. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1942. Don Kessinger, Kemp shortstop from 1964 to 1975. The shortstop played a club record 1,618 games at shortstop during 12 seasons as a Cub, including at least 140 games in 10 straight campaigns. A sure-handed fielder, he led the league as a shortstop in assists and double plays four times and putouts three times. Don was a six-time NL All-Star and two-time NL Gold Glove winner. Joe McCarthy led the Cubs as manager from 1926 to 1930. McCarthy guided the Cubs to five straight winning seasons from 1926 to 1930, posting 442 wins and 321 losses, the record as manager. He ranked sixth in club history with those 442 victories. He led the club in 1929 to its first NL pennant in 11 seasons, with a 98-54 and record, and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1957. Charlie Root pitched for the Cubs from 1926 to 1941. The franchise leader in wins with 201 and innings pitched at 3,137.1 and games pitched in 605. He posted a 201 and 156 record and a 3.55 ERA in 16 seasons with the Cubs. He reached double-digit wins 10 times, including a career-high 26 in 1927, and later served as a Cubs coach. Ron Santo, the Cubs' third baseman and broadcaster from 1960 to 1973. Santo hit 337 home runs, ranking fourth in franchise history and played at least 150 games in 11 consecutive seasons, and was a nine-time NL All-Star and five-time NL Gold Glove Award winner. After retiring, he became a beloved broadcaster. Santo had his number retired by the Cubs in 2003 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2012. Albert Spalding, Cubs pitcher, manager, executive, and owner from 1876 to 1902. Along with William Hulbert, he co-wrote the Constitution that founded the National League in 1876. Spalding served as a player manager for the Chicago team that won the inaugural NL pennant, posting a 47-12 record as a pitcher. He led the club as team president for three NL pennant winners and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1939. Andy Pafko, outfielder and third baseman from 1943 to 1951. Pafko was an NL All-Star at center field and third base and hit .294 in nine seasons with the Cubs, including 110 RBIs for the 1945 NL Champions. A four-time NL All-Star, he led the Cubs in hits four times and home runs twice while leading NL outfielders with 24 assists in 1944. Jimmy Ryan, Cubs outfielder from 1885 to 1900, 
Ryan batted .308 in 15 seasons with Chicago, including an NL best 182 hits, 33 doubles, and 16 home runs in the 1888 season. Ryan was a versatile player who could fill in at all outfield positions as well as third base, second base, shortstop, and pitcher. Hank Sauer Outfield there from 1949 to 1955. Hank hit 198 home runs in seven seasons with the Cubs, leading the league in home runs with 37 and 121 RBIs in 1952 to earn the NL MVP. He hit a career high 41 home runs in 1954 and was twice named an NL All Star. Joe Tinker, Cubs shortstop and manager from 1902 to 1916. Tinker hit .259 with 304 stolen bases in 12 seasons with the Cubs, serving as the starting shortstop for the World Series champions in 1907 to 1908. Tinker led in all shortstops in fielding four times and assists three times and served as player and manager in 1916. Tinker was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1946. Hippo Vaughn, Cubs pitcher from 1913 to 1921. Vaughn won 151 games in nine seasons with the Cubs, the most by a lefty in franchise history. He led the team with wins six straight seasons including five seasons with at least 20 victories. He guided the Cubs to the NL pennant in 1918, leading the league in 22 wins, 148 strikeouts, and a 1.74 ERA. Heck Wilson, outfielder from 1926 to 1931. Wilson batted .322 with 190 home runs in six seasons with the Cubs, leading the league in RBIs twice, including an MLB record of 191 RBIs in 1930. Wilson led the NL in home runs four times with a career high 56 in 1930 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1979. Philip K. Wrigley, also known as PK, served as the Cubs owner and executive from 1932 to 1977. PK oversaw the expansion of beautiful Wrigley Field, including the introduction of Ivy on the outfield walls. As team president, PK led the Cubs to NL pennants in 1935, 1938, and 1945. He was one of the first owners to embrace the broadcast of games on television. And he founded the All-American Girls Baseball League. Heine Zimmerman, Cubs third baseman and second baseman from 1907 to 1916. Zimmerman batted .304 with 210 doubles and 513 runs scored in 10 seasons with the Cubs, including a 1912 campaign in which he won the NL Triple Crown, hitting .372 with 14 home runs and 104 RBIs, while also leading the NL with 41 doubles. Billy Williams, outfielder for the Cubs from 1959 to 1974. He played 16 seasons with Chicago, ranking third in club history with 2,510 hits and 392 home runs. Williams played in then NL record 1,117 consecutive games from 1963 to 1970. A six-time All-Star, he won the NL batting title in 1972. Billy was elected to the Hall of Fame and had his number retired by the Cubs in 1987. William Wrigley Jr. Cubs owner from 1916 to 1932. 
A minority partner in the group that purchased the Cubs in 1916, William was a controlling partner by 1919 and became one of the first owners to embrace radio coverage of games. He was the developer of Santa Catalina Island where the Cubs held spring training. Wrigley Field was named after him in 1926. William Wrigley III, also known as Bill, was a Cubs owner from 1977 to 1981. The son of Philip K. Wrigley, the president of W.M. Wrigley Jr. Company, took ownership of the Cubs in 1977. He was part of a 66-year run of the Wrigley family's involvement with the Cubs before the team was sold to the Chicago Tribune in 1981. Glenn Bickert, Cubs second baseman from 1965 to 1973. Bickert was one of the NL's top contact hitters. He had the highest at-bat per strikeout rate in the NL four straight seasons from 1966 to 1969 and posted seven straight seasons with at least as many walks as strikeouts. Glenn was a four-time NL All-Star and earned the NL Gold Glove Award in 1968. Jack Brickhouse Broadcaster from 1940 to 1981 Known for his trademark K hey, hey he served as the voice of the Cubs first on WGN Radio and then on WBKB-TV before beginning a 34-year run on WGN-TV. He was presented with the Ford C. Frick Award in 1983 and was a longtime member of the Cubs Board of Directors. Frank Schulte, also known as Wildfire, was a Cubs outfielder from 1904 to 1916. A slugging right field there for the powerhouse Cubs of the early 1900s, he earned NL MVP honors in 1911, becoming the first player in MLB history to reach at least 20 doubles, triples, home runs, and steals in the same season. Ed Rulbach, Cubs pitcher from 1905 to 1913. Rulebach with 136 wins and 65 losses with a 2.24 ERA in 9 seasons with the Cubs, reaching double-digit wins in 8 consecutive seasons from 1905 to 1912, including a career-high 24 victories in 1908. He remains the only pitcher to toss a shutout in both ends of a doubleheader, doing so on September 26, 1908 at Brooklyn. Bill Lang comes outfielder from 1893 to 1899. He hit 3.30 with 400 stolen bases in seven seasons, all with Chicago. He stole 84 bases in 1896 and 73 bases in 1897 while collecting 1,056 hits in just 813 games. Ken Holtzman, Cubs pitcher from 1965 to 1973. Holtzman was one of the best lefties in club history. He posted a 3.76 ERA in 237 games with the Cubs, including two no-hitters, one that came on August 19, 1969 versus Atlanta and the other coming on June 3, 1971 at Cincinnati. Holtzman won 17 games in 1969 and 1970 and retired with 80 wins with the Cubs, fourth among franchise southpaws. Randley Hundley was a catcher for the Cubs in 1966 to 1977. Hundley played 10 seasons for the Cubs ranking fourth in club history with 939 games caught behind the plate. He appeared in at least 149 games behind the plate in four consecutive seasons from 1966 to 1969, 
including 160 games in 1968. He earned an NL Gold Glove Award in 1967 and an NL All-Star nod in 1969. Fergie Jenkins, Cubs pitcher from 1966 to 1983. Jenkins posted 167 wins with a 3.20 ERA in 10 seasons with the Cubs. He recorded a franchise best 2,038 strikeouts and 347 games started. A three-time NL All-Star, he won the NL Cy Young Award in 1971 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1991. He had his number retired by the Cubs in 2009. Orville Overall, Cubs pitcher from 1906 to 1913. Overall went 86 and 43 with a 1.94 ERA in six seasons with the Cubs, topping 20 wins in 1907 and 1909. He went 2-0 in the 1908 World Series and earned a win in the deciding game of the series against Detroit. Riggs Stevenson, also known as Old Haas, was the Cubs outfielder from 1926 to 1934. He hit .336 with a .408 OBP in nine seasons with the Cubs. The best average by a Cubs right-handed hitter in the modern era in 1929, he batted .362 with 36 doubles, 17 home runs, and 110 RBIs for the NL champions. Rick Rochelle, comes pitcher from 1972 to 1984. He won 135 games in 12 seasons, ranking second in club history with 343 games started. In 1977, he went 20 and 10 with a 2.79 ERA to earn an NL All-Star odd. He led the Cubs in wins five times and reached double digits in victories nine times. Rick Sutcliffe, Cubs pitcher from 1984 to 1991. He won 82 and 65 in eight seasons with the Cubs, acquired during the 1984 season and went 16 and one with a 2.69 ERA to lead the Cubs to the NL East Division Championship and earn the NL Cy Young Award. He was named the 1987 Roberto Clemente Award winner and was a two-time All-Star with the Cubs. Pat Piper, public address announcer for the Cubs from 1917 to 1974. He started as a vendor for the Cubs from 1904 to 1916. Pat then took over as public address announcer duties and would miss fewer than 30 home games over 58 seasons as the voice of Wrigley Field. Harry Carey, Cubs broadcaster from 1982 to 1997. The beloved broadcast voice of the Cubs for 16 seasons Harry was most famously known for his trademark expression, holy cow, and his rendition of take me out to the ball game. The charismatic broadcaster was presented with the Ford C. Frick Award in 1989. Ryan Sandberg, also known as Rhino, was the Cubs second baseman from 1982 to 1997. Sandberg played 15 seasons with the Cubs Retiring as the MLB leader in home runs by a second baseman with 282. He recorded 2,385 hits with Chicago and won the 1984 NL MVP. He earned nine Gold Glove awards, the most by an NL second baseman. He was elected to the Hall of Fame and had his number retired by the Cubs in 2005. Yosh Kawano, clubhouse manager from 1943 to 2008. A devoted Cubs clubhouse manager for decades, Yosh worked under 37 Cubs managers and 12 general managers. 
His trademark white floppy fishing hat has been on display at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum since his retirement in 2008. William Holbert An executive for the Cubs from 1876 to 1882. A key investor and executive with Chicago and pre-NL days, William co-wrote the Constitution to form the National League in 1876 and served as Chicago president and NL president in 1887 until his death in 1882. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1995. Greg Maddox, also known as Mad Dog, pitched 10 seasons with Chicago, earning the 1992 NL Cy Young Award. He notched his 300th win and 3,000th strikeout in a Cubs uniform. With the Cubs, he was a two-time All-Star and six-time Gold Glove Award winner. He had his number retired by the Cubs in 2009 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2014. Lee Smith, Cubs pitcher from 1980 to 1987. Smith ranks first in Cubs history with 180 saves and retired as MLB's all-time saves leader with 478. He pitched eight seasons with the Cubs, leading the NL in saves in 1983 with 29. Smith was twice named an NL All-Star with Chicago and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2019. Leo DeRocher, also known as DeLith, was a Cubs manager from 1966 to 1972. He managed seven seasons with Chicago, ranking fourth in franchise history with 535 victories. He led the Cubs to five straight winning seasons from 1967 to 1971 going a combined 430 wins and 379 losses during that stretch. He guided the Cubs to 92 wins in 1969, the club's most victories since 1945, and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1994. Bruce Sutter, Cubs pitcher from 1976 to 1980. A dominant closer who mastered the split-finger fastball, he recorded 133 saves and a 2.39 ERA with four All-Star nods in five seasons with the Cubs. He won the 1979 NL Cy Young Award, posting 37 saves and a 2.22 ERA in 62 games. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2006. Margaret Donahue, an executive from 1926 to 1958. Margaret broke the barrier for women in sports as Major League Baseball's first female officer outside of team ownership. Hired as a stenographer with the Cubs in 1919, she was promoted to corporate secretary in 1926 and in 1950 to vice president and secretary, a post she held until her retirement in 1958. Andre the Hawk Dawson, comes outfielder from 1987 to 1992. Dawson hit 174 home runs in six seasons with the Cubs, leading the NL in home runs with 49, as well as 137 RBIs to win the 1987 NL MVP and Silver Slugger Award. With Chicago, he was a five-time NL All-Star and two-time Gold Glove Award winner and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2010. Buck O'Neill was a scout and coach for the Cubs from 1956 to 1988. A former Negro League player and manager, he spent 30 years in the Cubs organization as a scout, minor league, spring training instructor, and mentor. He served on club's major league coaching staff from 1962 to 1964, 
the first African American to coach for an AL and NL club. A champion for preserving Negro League history, he was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2022. Pat Hughes, the current broadcaster for the Chicago Cubs. Known for eloquent delivery, quick wit, and encyclopedic knowledge of the game, Hughes embraced as the voice of Cubs for over a generation. Hughes called all seven World Series games during the Cubs' historic 2016 championship season. Hughes is the winner of the 2023 Ford C. Frick Award presented at the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Home St. Cardinal Cubs outfield there from 1972 to 1977. A fan favorite and colorful character, he led the team in stolen binks five consecutive seasons. His total over that span is the most by a Cub in over 40 years. He finished twice in top 10 in NL batting, including a .317 mark in 1975. He led the Cubs in hits twice and collected over 30 doubles three times. Lou Boudreau, broadcaster and manager from 1958 to 1987. Nicknamed The Good Kid, Lou spent 30 years broadcasting Cubs games on WGN Radio and WGN TV. He replaced Charlie Grimm as manager one month into the 1960 season before rejoining the booth the next season. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1970 for his accomplishments as a shortstop and manager. Bill Buckner, Cubs first baseman and outfielder from 1977 to 1984. Buckner hit .300 with 235 doubles and 81 home runs in eight seasons with the Cubs, including winning the 1980 NL batting title with a .324 mark. Buckner twice led the league in doubles as a Cub and was named an NL All-Star in 1981. Sean Dunstan, Cub shortstop from 1985 to 1997. A first overall draft pick, Dunstan enjoyed a 18-year MLB career, 12 as a Cub. Showcasing a strong arm and quick bat, he was selected to two All-Star games. Third in Cubs history for games played by a shortstop, including a club record 11 opening day starts. Dunstan topped NL shortstops and putouts three times, including 1986 when he also led an assist and double plays. Mark Grace, Cubs first baseman from 1988 to 2000. An anchor at first base for 13 seasons, Grace earned four Gold Glove awards and three All-Star selections as a Cub. He hit .308 with 2,201 hits, including 456 doubles, second in franchise history. Grace had more walks than strikeouts in all seasons in Chicago and led Major League Baseball in hits during the 1990s. And there you have it. Those are our Hall of Famers for now. Thank you for joining me on this journey and thank you to Mind Drinks for helping me stay strong and refreshed. Stay relaxed and I'll see you next time at beautiful Wrigley Field.